Welcome back to another episode of Living Hope, a weekly journey designed to provide hope, inspiration, and education for those living with pancreatic cancer. Sharing the real-life stories of those really affected by this disease and how they really deal with it on a daily basis. With your host, the woman who's been on this journey the most, Roberta Luna, 19 years and counting, right? Right. So let's go to the core question here today. Who did you bring with you today? Well, thank you. I brought today, I think, a very special guest for me. Her name is Dawn Camber. Dawn is the public affairs director and podcast host of a half-hour show, Impact OC, here on OC Talk Radio. Dawn interviews guests who impact Orange County in a positive way. Today, I feel like I'm turning the tables here. Um, Dawn, for one, is the role model that I, I look up to and hopefully will do as well as she's always done, done on her shows. But Dawn first had me a, a, on a guest on her show in 2008. And I feel had that first interview never taken place and Dawn had not continued with them, Paul Roberts, our station manager here, who you hear, would not have heard our journey and we wouldn't have been given this wonderful opportunity. So Vic and I want to thank both of you for your part in this new journey and we're looking really forward to it and hope we can really do some good with it. Don, I don't know if you remember how we met, but I received a call from you. At the time you were the public affairs and I think the news director at a different station. You received a media release I had sent out about an Angels game that we were doing as an awareness and fundraising event. You introduced yourself and said, is there enough for you to talk about pancreatic cancer for a whole half hour? And my response back was, all I get is a half hour? I remember asking you to do this show recently and you said, do I have enough to talk about for a half hour? Um, well, I, I think we can manage to do that. So um, to get started, before that first interview, had you ever heard of pancreatic cancer, had any connection with pancreatic cancer? The first time I heard about pancreatic cancer was actor Michael Landon. It was announced that he had the disease and I recall him being interviewed at night by one of the top nighttime talk show hosts. And he was comical about it, but it was very serious. I did not know what pancreatic cancer was, but hearing him talk about it scared the bejeebies out of me. And then you move on, and there have been other people who had the disease, like those currently Alex Trebek, Patrick Swayze, Charlotte Ray. None of these people are alive today, but it's brought pancreatic cancer to the fourfold. That it has. And um, it's funny you mentioned Michael Landon because, ironically, that was the first time I heard about pancreatic cancer, too. It was on, I believe it was a Johnny Carson show, and he got That's down right. and did, you know, push-ups. And I was thinking, you know, as a, maybe I shouldn't say this, but as a young girl growing up, I had a crush on little Joe. Um, you know, he was the cutest thing. I loved that hair, you know, the, just the whole thing. So when I heard about him having pancreatic cancer, the first thing I did was to Google it, which I think was a big mistake. And I always tell people once they hear they've been diagnosed, I advise them not to not to Google because you don't hear or read very positive things there. And then I really didn't think about it until years later when my dad was diagnosed with pancreatic cancer. And again, I made the mistake of Googling it and noticed, wow, nothing had changed since Michael Landon's death and my dad's diagnosis. There was still too many people being diagnosed and too many people dying from this disease. And it seemed like nothing, nothing had ever had changed. Are you seeing basically the same, do you think? Or am I looking at it in a different way? I'm not hearing anything more about it. I mean, you just hear when someone is willing to reveal they have the disease. And then when the time comes that there are no obituary. Very sad. That is very sad. I wanted to ask, as far as, like I said, the first time we met or you, I heard from you was about an Angels game. You mentioned that you had just walked by, I guess, the fax machine or something and saw the press release. What was it there that grabbed your attention enough that you wanted to even do a story about pancreatic cancer? Well, I didn't know much about it, and I thought it would be a great half-hour show. And I, you know, have to say we've done many of those half hour shows. We've been created. able to do the half hour shows consistently every single year. And I don't think we've ever run out of information or anything to talk about. Which, no. You know, I think we've been able to keep it pretty fresh. Unfortunately, again, not much has changed with those interviews other than, you know, updating and you allowing me to bring sometimes different guests with me, which I really appreciate that opportunity 
um, they were able to share their journey. Vic, my husband, was one of those. He's a caregiver for me and my family. Jennifer was pregnant when her husband was diagnosed and died three and a half months after their son was born. Anna lost family members and her mother-in-law to the disease. Susie was a caregiver for her husband, and she was also diagnosed with pancreatic cancer six months after her um, husband's death. So many different journeys. How did hearing these stories affect you? Well, it affected me that the disease duration for many people can be short, and the fact that you've been able to live long with it. And I will say the story that, you know, I want to interview you every year. (laughs) And the way I operate is I call you months in advance. And you had played an unfortunate game that you're allowed to get away with. And that is I call up and I say, (laughs) Roberta, and you don't answer the phone. And then you may call me back and go, Dawn, boo. And we know darn well what the thinking is going, whether you're around or not, we do not know. But it's you, because I love you, and you've been a survivor (laughs) for so long, you could get away with playing these little games, but I'm so happy you're around to talk about it. I'm sorry, I guess I have to apologize. I just have a little devil on one shoulder and the angel on the other, and sometimes the devil wins out. But with you, I try not to let that go on for very long, because I remember the first few times you would call me and just the hesitation in your voice when you would say my name. You're not sure, is this still your phone number? Is this somebody else's or what? So... But I, I really do appreciate that. And I'm sorry, I these other journeys, as far as hearing these other stories, I mean, there's a connection, of course, pancreatic cancer, but they're all so different. Do you take away anything from that? or Just um, the fact that there is hope, but there's also despair because people are dying from the disease and we don't have a cure for it. Yeah, unfortunately, m- not much has changed there, though. When I was diagnosed, I believe when my dad was diagnosed, I believe the uh, survival rate was only 3%. When I was diagnosed, it was 4%, and then it went 5%, which it was for many years. But now we are finally up to 10%, which is an improvement, but still not good enough and still not acceptable. We really need to get more awareness out there and get those survival rates up. I don't know. Um, early detection, is that the answer? I, I think so. I don't know if you have any thoughts on any of that, what you've heard or have you seen in the media as far as any? I've heard nothing about early detection. I mean, when I tell people the story about you, which I proudly talk about, Roberta <laughs> Luna, I love you so much. I say, yeah, I've been interviewing this lady for years and she's been living with it for 19 years, but she tells people that she told her doctors that family members died of the disease and she told the doctors to say, find it in me. And they did. And people are so amazed and impressed that you've been able to live this long with this disease. Well, thank you for sharing that. I appreciate it. I think um, I, I know we had a guest on before who made a comment. It's all about Roberta, and we know it's not, but to get the story out there, whatever it takes to get the story out there and to bring awareness, I greatly appreciate it. And that's why I appreciate both you and Paul for letting us do this show because I hope I hope it does do what we're looking for, and that's to bring the awareness, make people realize you're not out there alone. Even those that we have lost to the disease – their story needs to be told because we need to hear that. We need to not forget who they were and what they did and what they went through um, because that is where we are going to go further, hopefully. I don't uh, know if you've heard anything that you think that's surprising about pancreatic cancer or you've learned anything different or new about pancreatic cancer. The only thing that surprises me is there isn't that much more money that's being devoted to research for it. You would think that the disease is so deadly and we don't know that much about it, that by now there would be more money put forth to find a cure for it. It is improving, but still money, you know, we get most of our money, unfortunately, from the government. And, you know, we we advocate every year. We go to D.C. and we ask our members of Congress to increase and not to decrease funding for not just pancreatic cancer, but for the NCI, the National Cancer Institute, and the National Health Institute, that we need to do the funding for cancer. But now we also do have a program under the DOD, the Department of Defense, where they have set aside a certain percentage of research for pancreatic cancer. And I know a lot of people ask, well, how did you get it under the DOD? And my thought was always, you know, as a patient survivor, we are fighting our own type of war. Now, I know that was kind of stretching the imagination there to think the government thought of it the same way. But what I've learned recently is that they found a lot of veterans have died or been diagnosed with pancreatic cancer, and that's how they were able to get a part of 
the DOD. So for that, I'm sorry for those losses, but had it not been for that, we wouldn't be where we are with that funding. So I, and I have to give PANCAN, the Pancreatic Cancer Action Network, a lot of credit for that because they're actually the ones that organize us going to, you know, advocacy day every year. So with the different stories and the journeys that you've heard, like the ones that I've mentioned, does any one of those stand out any more than another or to you? There is, I will say this, a, a string that goes through every single one of them, and that is anybody who's been touched by pancreatic cancer wants to help, and they many times will want to participate in the walks that you have every year. I know last year it was virtual, <laughs> but they care enough to help out with the fundraising they care enough to reach out to try to get more funding for it, to get more information out about it, because nobody wants to find out that their loved one is dying of this disease. They don't want to find out they're dying, and they want to know they can go someplace and get information, which is, you know, PenCan's been great about. You mentioned our, our virtual event last year, and um, it was different, but, you know, it was we made it work. It was still great. Of course, we want to be and we love to be in person. But it was nice that they were able to do, still do something, keep us out there and doing something. And you're right, people who get involved really want to make a difference in this. And I'm really happy to announce that Purple Stride has been moved to April 30th, 2022, but it will be in person. So that's going to be awesome. I can't wait to see everybody back out there. I think I might have asked you this question before. I'm sorry, I don't remember. But what's the most surprising thing you've learned or learned about pancreatic cancer? There isn't anything surprising about it except the fact that many people don't know about it. And even when they hear about it, they may not remember what it's about because it's the pancreas and it's, you know, this, this, I guess it's an organ in your body, right? Yes. <laughs> and what it does, Paul always has to ask you to explain what it is so that we'd understand how it operates and why it is so deadly. Yeah, and uh, the, the your pancreas is a very important part of your body. Um, it sits, unfortunately, more towards the back than the front. That's why it's hard to diagnose and hard to feel any tumors that might be there. Uh, most people, a lot of people present with back aches and thinking that they pulled a muscle, especially if they're very active. Um, it can be, you know, the, the symptoms are so vague, unfortunately. You can have nausea, constipation, diarrhea. There's so many things that it leads people to think, doctors especially, that it could be something else. The pancreas is important. It's only about six inches long, but it's very important in that it carries the enzymes that helps digest your food and also the insulin to keep us balanced. So it's something that, it's a needed organ. It's not a needed thing to the appendix, but it's not like we can do without, you know, we can do without the appendix. The pancreas is something we really need to continue. And so people need to be aware what their pancreas does and if they start seeing anything that might lead them to think there's an issue there they really need to be their own best advocate and speak out because unfortunately doctors are not always going to look at the pancreas first they're going to look you know you have GERD acid re reflux maybe it's your gallstones um, you know other things so intestinal issues so it's something to be really aware of what your pancreas does it's very important you don't have any family members facing this disease no I don't I'm very thankful for that. Um, Me too. Unfortunately, I've come across a lot of people who don't want to hear about it or don't want to get involved because they say either I don't know anybody who has it or now you've jinxed me, now I'm going to catch it. They don't even sometimes even want to come close because they think it's something that they can catch. So we're always having to educate. That's, that's not, you know, how it does. But you don't have anybody really f facing this. And I've made comments, to, and I hope this is is definitely not something true to, for you. But I've had a number of people come to me and say, you know, I don't want to know anything, I don't have anybody, but I always tell them, you may not know anybody today, but unfortunately, the way the statistics are rising, you will know somebody in your life, lifetime that will have it. But you, are, I think, are taking action in that you are very involved. You know, you do these interviews, you do these stories every year, uh, and not having a family member, anybody really close to you that's affected by it, why do you keep doing it? It's important to get the information out. I think information helps you live your life. I would want to know if any of my family members had it, any friends had it, and I would want to study it and understand because I like to know what people are going through and most importantly, how to approach people because it's different when you have a disease, when you know someone who has a disease, the proper way to talk to them. I've asked you that. 
And sometimes it's hard. It's hard to know how to do that. Um, if somebody were to come to you and say, I have, I have pancreatic cancer, I've just been diagnosed, or I have a family member that's just been diagnosed, what advice would you give them? I would say, are you willing to share more information about what you have and what can I do for you? And what do you want people to do for you? To be sympathy, offer compassion to people. That's the most important thing. You want to help people out. And if you know knowledge, share it. That's a, good, the, a very good point. And I hope that when you're giving this information that you remember to, to tell them to go to pancan.org. Um, because like I said, Googling, Googling pancreatic cancer is really uh, a bad way to learn anything about it, unfortunately. In your opinion as a person in the media, how do we get the media to report on and keep pancreatic cancer in the forefront and not just when a celebrity is involved? Shows like yours, <laughs> Living Hope, that's one good way of doing it. Another good way of doing it, I believe you have Pancreatic Cancer Action Month. Yes, we do. Awareness Month in November. Okay, you have that. And you have the color purple. Definitely. As you can see, we're both wearing purple. Thank we're, you very much that's for a, doing that. I appreciate that. And <laughs> every time I look at the color purple, I think of you. <laughs> and make it part of the other cancers that people talk about and learn about. Don't keep it as an isolated cancer. Yeah, I, I'm not sure. I don't know if it's just because... I mean, when you look at the whole picture, yes, not a whole lot of people are diagnosed with pancreatic cancer. But unfortunately, those people that are, most of them don't survive. And, you know, it's, I know I hear from a lot of other survivors and patients that when they go into the store, especially during Breast Cancer Awareness Month, not that we want to take anything away from them because they've done a tremendous job and we want that to continue, but they just feel a little slighted, like, well, why aren't we getting that same kind of acknowledgement? Why don't we come in and see purple ribbons on a Folgers can or on the cereal box or, you know, whatever the case may be? And is there something that we could be doing differently when we approach the press to get this done? Just do what you're doing and try to encourage the press to do a little bit more. They could do more stories on it. But you could also reach out to other podcasters to do interviews and get the word out because a lot more people are doing podcasts and a lot of people listen to podcasts. That's another medium. And social media. I mean, there's a whole way of getting information out. There's Twitter, there's Facebook, there's LinkedIn. There's so many ways and just use those mediums to get them out and get them out often. That's the beauty of this show, your Living Hope show. Well, thank you. We're going to give those ideas a chance and see. Uh, we do use social media and that has been a really great avenue for doing events. And um, I'm not really technically good with it, but I'm learning. And hopefully the show is going to help me out with that as well, learning new things to get things out there. Before we go, is there anything that you'd like to share with us in addition? Oh, it's all about Roberta. <laughs> Just that you're a wonderful person, and I'm grateful to have had the chance to get to know you over the years. And for you to ask me to get out of my comfort zone, to be on your show, that that is sweet. But, of course, I would never say no to you. And I just hope that you are the longest living person with pancreatic cancer. Well, fortunately, thank you for that very sweet, those very sweet sentiments. Um, I'm not the longest. I have actually met somebody who is 22, 25, and even a 40-year pancreatic cancer survivor, which was totally awesome and just overwhelming. I, I just felt like I didn't know what to say to him when I met him. But um, so it's, it's nice to meet that and to see these others. And I thank you for all the time you've given us on your show and for your support and for wearing purple and thinking it's all about me when we know it's not. But, you know, and sharing. I'm also in, not in my comfort zone, so it's nice to see you as well, not being in yours and on the other side of the table here. But I do want to thank you very much for everything that you've done to support us. And again, also to give a shout out to Paul and OC Talk Radio for letting us do this weekly show and we're just looking forward to it just blooming out there and just really having a lot of people being able to reach us and get their resources that they needed. So thank you again for very much for being here. And since you said you can never say no to me, we are actually going to jump again April uh, 9th, I believe, uh, it's like the second Saturday next year. So since you haven't since you said you can never say no to me, if you don't want to jump, you need to at least come out and watch us and be part of that party. I would have come last year, but it was virtual. No, we did, I, actually, we didn't jump last year, so that would have been the time for you to do it. It was to be the virtual jumper, right? Sure. But, yeah, but we'll be doing it again in April next year, and it's going to be a, a great re try to recruit a new person as well as a, a survivor every time. So, again, even if you don't want to jump, I won't make you get in the plane and jump, but just come out and have fun. 
Sure. <laughs> you said jump out of a plane? Of course. I'm sorry. I was thinking the the walk. No, no, no. You said you'd never say no to me. So when oh you said goodness. I'll never say no, now oh I got to get you in that plane and get that parachute strapped Ooh. on you and get you out. Ooh, I, I, I'll be on the sidelines. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much, Don. We appreciate you being here. Love you. Well, there you have it, another episode of Living Hope, a weekly journey designed to provide hope, inspiration, and education for those living with pancreatic cancer. Sharing the real-life stories of those really affected by this disease and how they deal with it on a daily basis. And if you or anyone else you know needs help or has somebody that's just started the journey or you're riding the journey yourself, there is a place to go. Contact Patient Services. 877 the number two pancan that's 877 and the number two p-a-n-c-a-n to reach the pancreatic cancer action network talk to somebody who's going through what you're going through right now which is what we'll do each and every week join us right here in orange county's only community radio station as we explore more living hope weekly journey for those with pancreatic cancer Streaming live for the University of California, Irvine's Beale Applied Innovation Center. This is Paul Roberts inviting you to come back and join us each and every week.